Hello everyone, this is Michael Jacobs. Hope everybody's doing well. I thought this graphic here would be interesting to some folks, so I wanted to share it. And what you're looking at is the linear momentum of both of the arms combined. So we have the lower arm, the upper arm on both sides, them combined, so their linear momentum. So uh, the way we do it is your lower arm would have its own mass. Your upper arm would have its own mass, uh, obviously on both sides. And then your chest segment, which is the rib cage, uh, we call it the chest in our program, that would have its own mass. And that's much more massive, obviously, than the different segments of the arms. So when we're talking about linear momentum, we're talking about mass times velocity. So it's like moving mass. So it gives us an idea of how the different segments um, can catch up to each other speed up or slow down since the fact that the mass doesn't change during the swing. So it's a really neat way to see, in my opinion, how the golfer is doing things linearly to help speed the club up. And one of the biggest things that I find to be important is the notion that there will be, there will be more linear momentum in the chest. It's much more massive. Uh, but there's more linear momentum in the chest early on in the downswing, and then somewhere right around a certain point, the arms gain on the chest. And I'm always looking for that crossover point when the arms have more momentum than the chest. And since they're less massive, this tells me that they are really uh, increasing uh, their velocity. So... What's interesting is if you look at the Nelly Corda image above, that's the point in the swing, in her downswing, this is with the driver, where the linear momentum of her arms passes the linear momentum of her rib cage uh, on the chart, on the graphic of in more momentum than the chest. That's a pretty good indicator and a pretty good timing of the swing where we would see something like that. Next, you're taking a look at uh, a picture of Patrick Harrington from a couple of years ago uh, when we first motion captured him. And at that point in the swing, this was when they were at their closest, the momentum of his rib cage and the momentum of his arms. But back then, the momentum of his arms was always greater than that of his chest. So his arm momentum was greater than his ribcage momentum. So there was no point in this area of the swing, right, in the end of the backswing, early downswing to impact, where his chest or his ribcage had more momentum than his arms. And think about how massive that is. So that has been the signifying change over the past year and a half, 18 months, to his swing, to where the point now there's higher momentum in the chest, linear momentum, and then the arm momentum pours on much later. You could use that as a terminology. And that has been able to stabilize his speed. So everybody wants to know how someone can average 309 yards, right, and play on the Champions Tour. But whatever the case may be, the speed was always in there, right? It was just finding the right combination of movements to maximize that speed. So one of the things that I consistently use is this linear momentum equation that Dr. Nesbitt and I um, work through, through the, the whole entire body. Now on the flip side, there's a whole conversation on the angular momentum of all these different things. But let's start with this one, and hopefully this helps you start to look at a golf swing differently.